<laughs> if our only air intake is here, well, that runs out here. So none of these would be vented. So to resolve that, we've utilized a different product. What's going on here is we've asked the framers to do something that is way more complicated than what they're used to. We are asking them to execute this roofing venting because of the over roof and the under roof. There's a lot going on here. We have two different roof planes on the under roof. This is the back edge of our three quarter tongue and groove soffit material. And then this is half inch thick. Well, obviously our roof rafters are the same dimension. So we're dealing with a quarter inch difference there. Plus we've added the ice and water shield from Huber, their peel and stick underlayment. So I've allowed for an eighth of an inch there as well. So that's why we have this inch and an eighth OSB rip. This shims this out, inch and a half furring strip on top of half inch, inch and an eighth furring strip on top of three quarter inch plus ice and water. Basically planes out. But then you can see where it gets complicated. I need venting to get to this valley. So underneath my inch and an eighth plywood, I've used Benjamin Obdike's old style UV batten material, which this is an off label use. This is me deciding a good way to get airflow across here. We could have used a different product. We're fans of Obdike. It made sense to use it here. We had this UV batten material left on another project so we can sell it to this job and allow lateral venting. Air can come up through the vent space back at the uh, fascia, move into this cavity, and then cross ventilate all the way up into the valley. And that's why all these on the inside edge of the valley have that little black strip underneath because we're moving air up to the ridge across each of these bays, utilizing the intake from here. Here's where the problem comes in. When you ask your framer to do 16 different things on the same house, you might only get 14 of them, which is still really, really good. But I need this job done and they just missed a spot here. So we're gonna fix it so that they can get rolling first thing tomorrow. So I want venting at least the first two bays over from the valley so that I can get some air in across that valley and vent it well. Because I need to be only an inch and an eighth at this position, you know, on top of the back of the tongue and groove, I really need venting up here. So I don't want to cut into my roof. That's my air barrier. So I'm going to use an oscillating multi-tool and I'm going to take an additional six feet, basically extending this an additional six feet to let air into this cavity. The other thing I need to do is the guys messed up a little bit here and they use the vented section on top of here, which will make it too thick. It won't plane out because the three eighths thick corrugated plastic that is the old style UV batten is now sitting on top of our three quarter thick. So I need to cut here and replace it with inch and an eighth and same here, inch and an eighth, just like these are all the way across the rest of the soffit. So the other thing to be aware of on this, we have some areas that aren't going to vent as well. And that would be right up here at the very, very top. We're using material where we can. We're leaving gaps to let a little bit of air up here, but I'd like a little bigger gap there and it's not gonna harm the sheathing any. So I'm gonna cut this here as well. Instead of a half of an inch of venting, I'll get three inches of venting. And now we're bringing air from our intake underneath the roof deck and across all the way up the valley. And that's a critical detail that we're doing on both sides of the valley, all the way up on every valley. Because without that, yeah, this part's vented, but the valley is, you know, almost half the back of the roof here. So we don't want to do a good job some places. We really want to do a good job everywhere. Yeah.